so whatever the uh, developer or architect responsibility has to be there within the project every aspect of it will be covered under this training so first i will walk you through about the development training content followed by administration course okay so the one that you're seeing on your screen right now is about the development okay so the first so there are different modules within this and the first module that we have is about the micro strategy desktop or you can also call it as micro strategy developer so under this module the first basic thing that we're going to start is about the micro strategy architecture working on any bi tool is simple but understanding the architecture behind it is utmost important right because we need to know what are the different components that makes your bi tool and how exactly this tool works okay how exactly the interaction and the talking happens between each and the every component to ensure it gives us the relevant information okay so these things will be covered under the uh, under the first module where we're going to introduce to the micro strategy bi architecture how the report or query execution flow happens and i will also walk you through on the interfaces and the different uh, components that we have thereafter we're going to do a bit of uh, administration though as an architect or a developer this module is something that we are not going to uh, i would say we are not going to be authorized to do it but still definitely as a uh, as a developer or architect it's good to know how my environment has been set up okay so under this module we're going to ensure how how i can configure my environment and when i say environment how i can configure my server how i can configure my metadata project sources uh, work around the services and so on so the entire instance like you know let's say for an example i want to build my development instance in the project so that is something that we're going to cover under this module okay so we will create the project sources we will create the projects how we can connect that projects to my databases and so on so these are all terminologies don't worry about all those things we will get much more familiarized as and when we continue with our training okay so under this module as i said it's going to be a bit of administration and uh, in a real-time scenario in a project scenario as an architect or a developer we would not have an access to do it this is something which is handled by the administration team thereafter we're going to switch on to the third module which is about micro strategy architect now whenever you work within your environment micro strategy environment there are two type of licenses that you will come across one we will have the micro strategy architect license and second where we have is the micro strategy development access micro strategy architect license is something where you can build the semantic layer as well as you can do all the development part development license can only be used to build the development objects but not the semantic layer what is the difference that we will discuss in the upcoming calls but i just at the high level understand micro strategy consists of a semantic layer and then you build a development layer okay semantic layer is something can be built only and only by the architects micro strategy architects okay and development can be done by both I, once you have architect license or you have a development access development license definitely you can do the development as well so under micro strategy architect the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to brush up our concepts with respect to logical data model and physical data model now remember one thing we are not going to build any model as such we're going to understand how i can reference or how i can use my this logical model and physical model to replicate within my micro strategy environment okay so how i can interpret my model how i can identify what kind of objects that i need to create within my environment and we will definitely see that you know the entire model has been replicated as it is within my project okay once once that has been done once we are like you know we understand the logical model once we understand the physical model we're going to actually build the entire semantic layer when i say semantic layer that's in the micro strategy and we call it as schema objects 
okay so we will see how to connect with the databases how i can import my tables how i can create my attributes facts or uh, define the relationships hierarchies transformations and so on so at a very high level whenever we say uh, semantic layer there is something called as schema objects for it okay and whenever i say development layer we have something called as public objects so under architect uh, module we're going to discuss each and every object that forms a part of your semantic layer okay i've just given you a few example like attributes facts transformations hierarchies and so on once we are done with that we're going to switch on to the micro strategy developer module where we're going to cover all the basics of my development I will see all the objects uh, which which help me to create the uh, you know a kind of uh, reports and the dashboards. So I have something called as metrics, filters, prompts. I will do all the data manipulations, style manipulations, subscriptions, and so on. Just a second. Okay, so under this module, it's all about the basic development. When I say basic development, that's going to be very simple and straightforward. Like you know, at least these are the bare minimum objects that you need to create your reports and dashboards. And definitely, once you are quite uh, acquainted with the MicroStrategy environment, the basic uh, development objects, the semantic objects, thereafter we can also switch it to the advanced level. And when I say advanced micro strategy, we want to see what are the different uh, advanced options or the different advanced objects that we can have within our environment. We are also going to discuss of uh, fine tuning of reports for the for the performance tweak. We will also see how we can create cubes free from SQL reports and so on. So all of this covers under the covers my uh, advanced micro strategy module. And as a last thing, I'm um, going to also concentrate on report service documents and dashboards. Okay, so there are two types of dashboards that we can have within MicroStrategy. One we call it as uh, these days we call it as Dozio, and the second we have something called as report service documents. So everything. So I've just quickly walk you through on the training content, but trust me, this covers my each and every object that you need to aware of or that you are ex uh, actually expected to create within the or to develop within your project okay so i'll take a pause over here okay so i'll just take a pause over here do you have any question or anything that you want to uh, you want to have further information around please let me know i have a, a chat over here which says can you share this word doc yeah definitely we can we're going to definitely share you the training content and you can uh, you can have it for your reference that is that is completely okay so big classes will share across you the training content as well yeah so i'll take a pause over here any question please uh yeah Panish. so uh, i just want to know that what is the cost of these different type of product like admin product architect product and development product so see uh First of all, that depends upon the way your organization has been tied up with the micro strategy. Okay, so there is no fixed cost as well. Okay, so we have per user license, or we also have something as by box. Okay, so now let's say if I procure any server box, it comes along like okay, you will have 50 licenses for the architect and 100 licenses for the developer. So it depends how well your organizations are in tie up with micro strategy, and accordingly the cost up in. Uh, associated with it right so uh, someone wants to uh, procure uh, one or two license and then mm -hmm. then what is the cost that means i just want to confirm that how much uh, cost the company uh, bears saying, for one product that's that's not the standard cost. That's what I'm saying. It, it depends how your contract has been signed up with your micro strategy. So as I said, when you say you just need one or two license, first of all, are you going per user? 
so what so at that time of a negotiation what is the license that is so nowadays we generally buy a box okay if i if i'm going with the enterprise server we generally buy based on the box and it gives you directly like a, a license for 100 users okay so it completely so i would say that you know or whoever is your uh, person who is in like relationship with micro strategy try to get in touch with them and they will help you with the costing part so even if you look out at your micro strategy site it doesn't say you anything about the cost because it all differs upon organization to organization the way the contract has been signed basically okay okay uh, and the second is how can uh, we get the software for more than one month for the training if someone wants to uh, go you for have to buy for it okay then in that case you have to buy for it you have to procure the license so you just need to write an email to the sales rep of micro strategy and uh, you pay the you pay the cost and uh, it will give you the license more than after 30 days or else i would i would say that uh, okay or else i would just uh, simply say that you can what you, what you can do is uh, after 30 days you can simply uh, just uninstall and install it back that's that's a workaround generally all my uh, candidates do that so after every 30 days they uninstall the software and install it back so that at least they get the more 30 days to play around with okay okay all right hi uh, i have a question yes please yes please in this training uh, will we be given some remote desktop to practice uh, micro strategy or uh, with live cases data sets and uh, report building or setting up objects or we have to download in our local system and how, how the hands on practice will happen in this training okay so basically uh, uh, there are i think two to three questions so i'll take it one by one the first thing is uh, i would say within our training like uh, we don't have any kind of uh, ppts or decks to represent it's going to be all practical implementation so there are three aspects of it first we'll try to understand what we are doing what we are why we are doing and how we are doing it okay so it's going to be all practical scenarios we will have a sample data set and we're going to start it from the scratch we're going to understand the log logical model and the physical data model and based on that we're going to work on like object by object within our environment so we started from the scratch and went and we deliver as a project in terms of reports and dashboards that's that's how the tra entire training is going to be shaped up second is uh, you, you will uh, you will not have the virtual instance so we recommend that you install the software on your machine and so that you can perform all your hands-on exercises third and third question is uh whatever we discuss during our daily calls right and as i said it's all practical implementation so we generally recommend that after the call you can go through those recordings you try to do exactly the same things from your end as well play around with those objects in case you have any question you can get back to us anytime and in addition to that we will also give you some hands-on exercises which we don't cover during our training calls but at least that would be for your offline or uh, hands-on exercises okay okay and uh, the last question these hands-on will also be completely on like setting up metadata and uh, you know correcting with some data source uh, data that we are already and... covering on that we are already doing in the uh this module right as i said micro strategy intelligence server and administration module that's already been part of your training and you can see the topics over here where we have already mentioned that we're going to configure the server metadata, configure the project sources, configuring projects, and so on. Okay, great. And I'll I'll have live and access to all these videos and all, right? After this training, or how's it? Yeah, absolutely. So you're going to have a view access for your lifetime. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. No problem. Any other question, guys? Before we move it to the administration content. No, all right then. So the one that you're seeing on your screen right now is about the micro strategy administration training. Okay, so now over here within the administration, uh, now this is something that we're going to cover in and out about the all the administration components within within micro strategy. So first, definitely we're going to start to understand about the 
different way your micro strategy can be architect so we have something called as two tier three tier four tier where exactly the intelligent server comes into picture where my web server plays a role and so on then we will do all the user management we will see how to create the users how to create the user groups what kind of accesses authentication and so on so all these things would be covered under user manager then we have something called a security rules again from the privileges standpoint we have something called a security filter this is more from the data security standpoint we have cluster clustering for the load balancing we and we will also see how to monitor my entire environment which all user has been connected to my environment what kind of jobs reports that are currently executed or have been scheduled and so on so all these connections will be monitored and we will see how as an administrator can control it then we will discuss as an overview about the different types of caches database instance we're going to cover under the development training as well definitely it's a scheduled parameter as to when exactly my subscription has to be kicked off and so on now whenever we say administration right you will see that it's a uh, different uh, components we have so, and it ends with something called as manager so we have object manager command manager system manager integrity manager enterprise manager and so on so all these managers are something which are completely under admin control and they are being used for different purposes okay so for an example if i go with the enterprise manager that gives me the entire statistical reporting and when i say statistical report uh, reporting uh, which user has accessed my environment which uh, reports are taking longer period of time for the execution and so on so whatever the statistics that you want to collect right everything can be reported using enterprise manager this is one example Se second is system manager where you can create some workflows to automate your task okay we have something called as object manager which will be used for migrating objects from one environment to the other environment and so on so all these things will be covered under administration so as i said we have something called as object manager integrity command enterprise managers service uh, system manager and so on okay so all these things will be covered and then we have something called as uh, narrowcast subscriptions but uh, this is something we don't use these days but still we will cover under our training and uh, we will also take a scenario where i want to see how i can upgrade my environment from x version to y version so now let's say uh, within your organization your environment is sitting on 9.x or 10.2 for an example and i want to upgrade to the latest which is 11.x definitely so what are the steps how exactly you can perform the upgradations and everything that is something we will cover under our training as well so we will take the metadata of older version and we will try to upgrade to the latest version so all those things will also be covered under this training and lastly we will also discuss about the mobile configuration and uh, micro strategy uh, sorry microsoft office integration as well okay so all of these things will be covered under the administration model and as i said earlier these two are completely different or i would say as an individual courses so depending upon your interest you can uh, you can get yourself and en enrolled in micro development or the admin or both okay so this is a quick walkthrough on the training content any question over here please no questions all right so yes this is this is about the training now next what we're gonna do is i'll try to make you familiarize with the uh, different interfaces that we have the one that you're seeing on your screen right now we call it as micro strategy developer now this is an interface where all the architects and development will do their job okay so all your 
uh, semantic layers, all your uh, configuration. Um, I would say a bit of a configuration part can be done over here. So the folders that you're seeing on your left hand side, these are all called as project sources. Now project sources is an initial entry point for you. Okay, so once you try to log in into any of your project source, first you have to authenticate yourself as a user and once that authentication is successful you would be able to see your projects for which you have access to okay so i'm trying to log in under this project source and once my authentication is successful you would be able to see i would be able to see basically the couple of projects it will take a few seconds There we go. So MicroStrategy Analytics module, and when I say it's a project source, is basically connected to my metadata instance. So now let's try to connect with the real-time scenario. Whatever projects that you have worked uh, within your organization, you see different instances, right? One we have it as development instance, testing and instance, and production instance. So for every instance. In MicroStrategy, we try to create a project source. So project source is connection to my metadata, which actually hosts the respective environment. Let's say development. Now within this project source, I can create single or multiple projects where each of this project is pointing to my corresponding database. Now let's say uh, you, you're working on a, uh, some you're working for an organization and within that you want to support two verticals one where you want to support the hr data and second where you have your sales data okay my sales data is residing let's say on oracle and my hr data is sitting on netiza box okay now both for both of this uh, unit i have a different set of users and definitely i don't want my sales representative to access the HR data and vice versa. So definitely I will create two projects within my project source, two projects. One project will be pointing to my sales data, that is Oracle. Second project will be pointing to my HR data, which is Netiza. I'll create my objects, I'll create my reports. And when I onboard my users, I will ensure that my sales user can see only the sales project and same thing for the HR users. And by this way, I can ensure that they don't do a cross reporting. So remember one thing that my project source is always connected to my metadata. Within that, I will have projects where each project will be connected to my required databases. And when you try to open a project, you will see all the folders and subfolders within it. And this is the pieces where you're gonna create and save your objects so at a high level as i told you there are two types of uh, objects that you will come across one we have it called as schema objects where we're going to create my entire semantic layer and second we have is the public objects where i'm going to build my application layer or my development layer okay we will discuss about each and every objects that have been mentioned over here but that is something we will discuss as and when we continue with that trading this is this is my developer instance similarly we have something called as microstrategy web okay one second okay I, this is my microstrategy ad, admin page let me just connect to my server Let me just open. I'm trying to access my MicroStrategy web homepage, and you can see as I try to access the MicroStrategy web homepage, it's showing me all the projects for which I have access. So if I try to access my project, now depending upon the authentication mode that has been enabled 
so we have a standard authentication so i need to enter my id and password and once this authentication is successful i should be able to access my environment i can access my reports and dashboards over here okay so this is my microstrategy web page where generally end users will try to log in into the environment and they can access their reports and dashboard for doing all the data analysis okay so as an architect or developer we're going to spend most of our time under developer tool as an end user or as a tester i would try to uh, run my reports and dashboard from web okay so these are the two important components or two in, uh, important interfaces that we have to access the microstrategy environment okay now let's try to understand how microstrategy works okay the the next thing that we're going to discuss is the microstrategy bi architecture how microstrategy really works now i think most of you are coming from the data warehousing background right you will understand uh, there are two things that we need to have one is the back end where my entire data gets processed and second is my front end where we do the reporting the one that you're seeing on the left hand side of the line that all forms the part of my back end so i have a source system that is the source of my actual data a raw data and then i have something called as etl tool which will allow me to extract the required information from the source data apply all the transformation and mapping logic and load it into my warehouse so there are various etl tools that we have in market we have informatica we have data stage and so on so it depends upon organization to organization so definitely the etl tool will allow me to get the uh, data streamlined and stored within my warehouse and when i say warehouse it's a database it could be oracle teradata and it is a server so this warehouse actually consists of tables and columns where my entire data is residing so all these components forms a part of my backend and on top of this i want to do my reporting and for that we are using microstrategy now let's try to understand how microstrategy works whenever we say microstrategy the core part of microstrategy is metadata now don't get confused between the warehouse and metadata now warehouse is my uh, is, is is the is the place where my organization data is residing on which i want to do my uh, reporting basically metadata is specific to your microstrategy environment again it's a repository but it stores all the information and definition about your objects about your environment and so on so whatever activity you do within your microstrategy environment everything gets recorded over here you create a user that definition and information will be stored over here you create you modify or you delete any other objects everything gets recorded in metadata so metadata is a core part of your microstrategy environment and trust me if anything goes wrong with your metadata your entire environment will come down okay so as an administrator they will make sure that the metadata's backup has been taken regularly so that they don't come across a scenario where uh, like you know your entire environment just gets shut down now let's try to understand how it works whenever we put forward any request from microstrategy whenever we request any kind of a data basically the, it will not go and hit the warehouse directly first it will come to the metadata now let's say for an example i'm trying to execute a report but i want to see the data for customer wise revenue okay so definitely i have two objects one which gives me customer information and second which gives me revenue information so when i execute my report the first thing it will do is it will come to the metadata and as i said my metadata holds each and every information about my objects so once it comes to the metadata it will try to fetch those object definition it will see customer as an object is pointing to which table and column revenue as an object 
is pointing to which table and column and based on that once those definitions have been fetched based on that it's going to formulate a sql query so role of metadata is not only to store the object definitions and information it will also help you to get the required sql query once that sql query has been formulated it will open a connection to the warehouse execute that particular sql fetch the data and then it will come back to MicroStrategy and display that data as per the format that you have set it up within your reports or within your dashboards okay so this is how your entire micro strategy environment works so this is the overview about the micro strategy architecture and trust me this is the heart of micro strategy metadata anything goes wrong over here you, you you just literally get screwed up with your environment i'll take a pause over here any question please No question all right so this is about the micro strategy pi architecture and last thing for today what i will do is i will just quickly run a sample report or a dashboard in micro strategy environment just to make you familiarized as to how it really looks like so i'll go to some sample uh, dashboards and uh, let's say let's say let's see i'm gonna run top 10 airports okay Just taking some time. All right, so here we go. This is just a sample dashboard and you can see it's giving me the information about uh, top 10 world airports and uh, Whatever airport that you select you can see at the bottom section the corresponding image and the data is getting updated So it's a quite simple dashboard, but definitely a lot of interactivity that has been added over here so this is giving me the uh, current information okay the when i say the current top 10 world airports the corresponding passenger count the percentage year on year percentage of international passengers and so on and if i go to the historical trend it gives me different set of data with different uh, formatting so i have my top 10 airports it's giving me the percentage year on year growth along with that it's showing me the passenger count as well so whatever airport for which I want to see the data, I can do a selection over here. And I want to convert this. I can click on line chart, and the same information will be displayed as a line chart. So there are lots of visualizations, a lot of uh, widgets that are available in MicroStrategy. And we will definitely see each and everything as and when we cover under our training. Okay, so this is all that we have it from the demo standpoint. Uh, I'm going to take a pause over here. I'm going to stop over here. Please let me know in case you have any question We will definitely share the today's recording. We will also share the training content with you and Yeah, we would definitely like to hear back from you and uh, how you want to take it forward from here Okay, so by by saying that I will stop over here I will open up for you guys in case you have any questions or you want to discuss on anything. Just let us know No question guys uh, hello yes please hi, hi this is brother so when this training will start so that depends upon uh, 
as soon as you confirm us back so definitely we can start it from the next week itself we just have to discuss on the time slot depending upon the entire batch availability okay so once we have the confirmation we can get it started from the next week itself and how how many week it will yeah that's a, that's a good question i think that's something we missed out so the development training uh runs for around four to five weeks so we have calls on daily basis that is monday to friday eastern time est time okay so we will have a calls monday to friday uh, and for india indian folks we have we, we have it as tuesday to saturday morning okay and uh, yeah so development generally runs for around four to five weeks that depends upon uh, experience uh, level of all the of all the candidates and for the administration it takes around close to two to three weeks and what we cover in a developer whatever you saw in the first yes yes so the, from the development standpoint whatever you see under this training uh, document the content document and from the administration the one that i just walked you through on this So before before we start training, we need to download this software, right? No, no, no. I will I will guide you on that. So once we once we have the confirmation, we will guide you as to how you can download the software. We will help you to actually get it installed, ensuring that uh, there is no issues or concerns uh, in accessing the software. So we will. That's going to be in the first uh, couple of calls. We will share the. Uh, download links we will also share the license the evaluation license key and we will also help you out to get your software installed on your machines and i have one more question you already mentioned in the beginning uh, so during our training session we can also get the time to practice by ourselves right uh see generally the every call uh is scheduled for around like 45 minutes to one hour right so i generally in in that 45 minutes to one hour i'm going to do all my practical implementation about topics that we are covering and mm -hmm. after that call you can do all your hands-on exercises in case you have any questions you can get back to us in the next call or you can drop us an email okay mm -hmm. and along with that we will also give you the hands-on exercise that would not be on the daily basis but maybe on the weekly basis we can have the additional uh, working sessions is there any certificate after this course we finish uh, if you want you can go give it but i would i would recommend that try to spend uh, a bit of more time before going for the certification because nowadays it's all about the it's not a it's not a multiple choice questions you actually have to create objects and save it right so i would prefer that at least uh, you spend some around one month or two months working on micro strategy and then go for certification okay all right so I would say we'll just stop over here for today. Thank you so much. And uh, we would definitely uh, will wait for the feedback from you guys. And once we have the confirmation, I think we can get it start from next week. Thank you. All right. Thanks so much, guys. Bye.